always slowest. This call is now being recorded. Oh, thank you, Google. Um, so yeah, good morning, good morning, or good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you are in the world. But uh, today is Thursday, May 26th. Welcome to our community call today. Uh, the focus of the discussion today is very much going to be uh, on the internal side. So we're going to present, uh, we'll have Valerie jumping in to present some elements of the onboarding work. Uh, and we'll, uh, I'm guessing we'll have some other folks who have been helping out with various elements of the process chime in on any uh, portions of that. Uh, and yeah, we'll kind of walk through, just give an update of what's going on. But I also kind of want to use this as a, as a springboard for a discussion with this group on uh, just the nature of onboarding and community at SCRF and uh, kind of given who we are. But uh, the, the primary focus very much is starting with the specifics of the project. So, um, yeah, I think we can probably just go ahead and Valerie, if you're ready for it, I'm happy to, to just pass it off to you and uh, yeah, let you run with the presentation. Yes, I, I'm ready. Good morning, everyone. Let me bring some slides up one second. Sure. And while you're doing that, I'll just give an update. So <clears throat> uh, next week in this call, uh, bar, of course, barring any surprises and rescheduling, but as of right now, the plan is to have uh, Chris from DSI Labs, uh, who uh, if y'all were in the, the last peer review discussion, I think the last two, he was very active in those. Uh, so we'll have him kind of, but they'll actually present on their organization and what they're up to. Uh, and then we're ironing out who will be on the ninth, potentially another peer review project. And then on the 16th, we are actually gonna have an independent researcher present on some research on deliberative decision-making. And we'll have a discussion on deliberative decision-making and governance, which should be a fun one too. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was filling enough air for slides to be pulled up. Not, not yet, should I fill um, more air? I will fill more air. <laughs> <laughs> I could always keep rambling. Um, so yeah, we're excited to, to kind of iron out uh, some of these calls uh, and just have more of a focus schedule coming up. Uh, and so one of the things we will look to improve will actually be communicating our upcoming schedule because it's great if we have a list in a spreadsheet somewhere internally, but if no one ever knows about it, how useful is that? So that's also going to be something we're thinking about. Uh, uh, yeah, that's going to be something that we're going to be actively thinking about in the coming weeks. Uh, so yeah, you should see kind of updates and presentation, at least some kind of version of, you know, here's the transparency of who will be coming up for the forthcoming calls in the next couple of weeks. So I'm very excited to do that. Um, and at this point, Valerie, as soon as you're ready, just cut me off. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep rambling with stuff. Um, but yeah, so uh, another thing that today I just put together a project plan this morning. Uh, and at some point, Oh, actually, maybe that'll be a that's definitely something we need to do sooner rather than later. But we'll do a presentation on actual project plans and how to submit new proposed project ideas and things along those lines. But um, I, I put. Can yeah. you see my slides? Not yet. Let me know. If, uh, and if anything, feel free to send something to me and I can share on my end. And I'm happy okay. to, uh, if you just tell me when I'm, I'm always happy to, to just click through the slides. Um, but yeah, we, we are going to, I, I just put together a project plan for our, fo our first proposed focused uh, book club slash reading group and to specifically focus on uh, pieces that can be helpful with thinking about how can we scurf better. And so the first one that uh, I would like us to work through is Impact Networks by David Ehrlichman. Uh, but uh, yeah, more to come on that side. Um, once I actually run that by the core ops team and get a chance to formally present it in the appropriate channels. Uh, but yeah, more to come on that side soon. But hopefully that was just enough rambling and air filling that we are now ready to go. So yeah, I'm happy to, to yes. throw this into full screen. Uh, and yeah, you just tell me, I, I will mute and you tell me when and I will move forward through this. Awesome. Thank you, Eugene. Yeah, I, I kept getting errors about sharing my screen. So um, we'll do it this way. But yeah, um, thanks everyone. Yeah, so we're going to share, I'm going to share with you today um, some of the work that this sort of onboarding team has been doing. The onboarding team is myself and Tamar. Um, we are uh, working directly with Paul and we've been working with a lot of the team. And this is really, I think what I'm presenting today is really a lot of work from everyone. So thanks to everyone who's really been collaborating on all of this. And I think um, we've gotten a lot of alignment all together in the org. And so I'm really excited by 
where we are today and, and what that means about all the work we've gotten done to get here. So yeah, if you want to move to next slide. Yeah, so what I'm going to go over with you, why we're here, what what was the problem we got here in the beginning? Like, why, why did we come in to kind of work on this? Um, the approach we took, I'm going to give you a demo of some of the process changes we've made for onboarding. And then I'm going to share with you the roadmap and kind of ask you guys to all sort of keep working with us and really ask the community to engage with us on this too. You can go to the next slide. Yeah, so, so why we're here. So Overall, um, when I came in to, to work with SCURF, um, SCURF was really moving from, you know, kind of testing out um, the product and the forum and what we had here and now moving into like, hey, we're, we have a lot more people. We know this works. Um, we, we need to kind of bring in some some maturity and, and we want to get more mature as an org. Um, and so to sort of do that to efficiently and effectively scale and grow the community, um, we really wanted to start to lay out all of the processes and, and kind of communication infrastructure, again, to, to be able to do more of that. Um, and so what we addressed with this too is attraction and retention of new employee, uh, of new uh, community members, again, so that we can keep scaling our community and create the um, building blocks of a uh, efficient process to, to do all of that. Next slide. So um, one of the approaches I took with this, um, I come from a change management background. And I think one of the things we talk about a lot at SCURF and both in Web3 and in DAO work in general is that um, about culture and that we're building culture online. We're building culture in this kind of new distributed, you know, fully remote work that's also, you know, really heavily supported by technology. And, um, and so my my background from that is that you know culture and community don't just happen it's all intentional and so all of the structure and process and communication you know and ownership that we give all of that that we work out are the building blocks of healthy cultures and so um in organizational change management we use this iceberg of culture like the things that you see at the top the vision and uh values and even the product we produce you know underneath is really all of this stuff that that creates that and allows good things to happen and for people to have a community here so that's where we came from next slide and so when we started looking at um onboarding um we i came from a perspective of okay well uh how was that for me and how was that for a couple other people that that came in um and so we really just sat down um and aligned on this we got a lot of data we did a, a bunch of interviews um and we started to break it down in all frameworks of people process and technology and that's what we have kind of today is this like onboarding version one um and so we don't even think that this is finished. Like this isn't finished. This is always kind of um, going to evolve as the community does. And um, even, you know, as we're using Discord right now, this is something that we're evolving and spinning things up. And um, uh, we have lots of different verticals working in this and to support, um, use the onboarding process to support all of that. And um, so this is going to change too. So tomorrow is kind of testing what we're going to roll out and really start engaging the community and then kind of keep doing this and even move up to what we're calling just like level up, right? We want to keep tailoring this for SCURF as we get more offerings too. And as as SCURF kind of continues to add more things to, uh, to the list of, of value we add. Yeah. So if you want to go to the next slide. So um, overall, what we've done with the onboarding process is we've kind of moved it from we're working in emails, we're, we're working with a bunch of different people. I might talk to one person and then move to another, or I'm not sure who I'm talking to at all. We've really uh, gotten rid of all of that and moved everything onto Discord. And I, and because that's the, the tool we, we want to use and we want people to sit in that space with us. Um, and so I've kind of broken it down really high level how this process works is intro, research, and integrate, right? So um, we get people introduced to, to, to SCURF as it is. We bring people into the Discord, into the forum. We introduce everyone, right? Do you kind of start to play around? And then you're going to do your research, right? This is your, you're playing around. You're, you might view some channels, you view different channels, but overall you're going to get these new channels that say opportunities and apply here. And I will show, or maybe Eugene's presenting. Eugene, maybe we can go to the Discord in a second too, but, um, but for now, I'll just talk about it. But you're going to see opportunities and apply here, which are really two new uh, categories that are going to support onboarding. So within opportunities, 
you'll see start here, bounties, grants, open positions, and then the source credit opt-in. So this is right away telling you how you can engage with SCURF, how you can earn with SCURF. Um, and this is supposed to be updated internally so that we're always pushing out more opportunities for folks. Apply here, you'll start to, if you start to go through it, you'll see that we have informational channels, right? How to use this channel, where, um, a channel to ask questions and then a channel to get more info about the process or um, what people um, might need. And then apply here is the biggest thing. We wanna um, bring people as quickly as possible to this third step, which is integrate. So yeah, as quickly as possible, we want people to come to this channel that says apply here and basically start their application with SCURF so that we can capture their value and we can you know, have them start doing stuff. We, yeah, we can get the, really capture the value, bring them in. And so what that is, is um, uh, essentially um, in Discord, it's a ticket tool. Um, and so we're using that now to really streamline the whole onboarding process. Um, and so you'll come in, you, know, you start your application um, with, with a little button and then it, it's, uh, you get some automated responses, but um, it mostly opens a uh, workflow, an individual channel with the onboarding team and then with the person directly. What this does too for the internal team, the rest of SCURF will be able to, to view this um, internally. SCURF will be able to view this. So it brings a lot of um, transparency and accountability the, to the onboarding process too, so that anyone internally can say, oh, hey, I know that I brought someone into the Discord where are they in the onboarding process? Did they start their application? Like, what are they doing? How how can we help this? And you can just go straight to um, the ticket tool and you'll be able to see where their application is, who's working with them all, already. And, and again, just bring a lot of transparency and accountability to that. Overall, this process is now gonna be run by this onboarding team. So um, right now that is me and Tamara again. And so we're gonna be responsible for that and we work um, this process is going to work really directly with Tanya too in hiring. Um, so our great our great team member Tanya, I hope she's on the call. Um, and she's doing um, just a shout out to Tanya. She's doing some awesome work too to lay out um, a similar process for hiring and how that integrates and do all the documentation. So um, uh, we're really touching all these adjacent processes with onboarding as well. So yeah, if you want to go to the next slide. So supporting items. So we've done, I think that even what you will see on the Discord when you go to it, and I'm sorry, I can't, I don't have my screen so that I can walk you through the ticket tool. Um, but but please, if you um, have access to the testnet, go view it on the testnet. It'll be live on the um, normal, the live server um, very soon. Um, we just have to work some few things out. And thanks to Brian for all his help. Um, but I, I think that this doesn't capture all the work that everyone else has been doing to, to do a lot of this. So um, a lot of the things that we had to align to get to the point were terms and titles at SCURF all together. You know, what do we call uh, people people's roles? You know, what is the, the levels here at SCURF? That, that was a huge um, collaborative effort here. Um, we have the hiring process that Tanya is working on, you know, all these adjacent processes is touching. Um, we have plenty of documentation that we've created about how to use all these channels. What's the purpose? Who's touching it? Um, how do you make changes there? You know, uh, what are any um, nuances you, you need to know here. about doing That's that? Been here, I promise. On December 14, 2012. Oh, sorry, Stephanie. I think we're getting some background noise on your and I'm going to go ahead and mute you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You yeah, yeah. And thank you, Eugene. Um, and then again, we've created a lot of documentation internally that we can hold and that we we're also going to be, um, you know, posting on um, on the GitHub, too, so that, that everyone can can see that also is just how does this process work? Like, what are all of the steps of this thing? And also laying it out in a way that um, in a business process model so that we can automate things a lot easier later. So that's what um, you'll see this like long um, uh, process uh, view at the bottom here. That's what that is. Um, we also just updated um, all of the text in, in these channels too. You know, that's a collaborative effort between everyone. We now have an onboarding email, which is a group email um, that you'll be able to shoot messages to or, or just, you know, uh, send any kind of help to and it'll it'll uh, uh, tag a bunch of us to be able to answer it. That was, um, Brian helped us set that up. 
We have new folders for all of this. We have a uh, deck template that Maria and team just made. I mean, we have a lot of work that is now supporting all of this stuff that was really incredible, I think, to get out at, at the same time. So thank you, everyone. We're also going to have um, a brand new um, a contract written for uh, content creators. And um, again, we have all of these templates that you'll be able to use too to keep posting about opportunities um, in the forum. So I think there's just a lot of work going on here that I'm, I'm hoping is um, captured and, and people also feel really good about because we, we did a lot of stuff. And then, and then Eugene, yeah, if you want to go to the forum and the test net, let's, or not the forum, the test net and share your screen, I want to walk people through. I'm going to yeah, pass it off works. to Brian to do that okay. part because I feel like if I'm doing the dummy of clicking through it for the first time, okay, in front Brian of everyone, knows, that's yeah. only going to discourage people from ever using this. So I'll let <laughs> someone who actually knows their way around it run with it. It's cool. Brian, can you um, can you uh, zoom in as well on your screen? Uh, hold on. I think I have to open it in the browser to okay. do that. Give me one second. Oops, let's see here. Okay. And just a shout out to Brian. Brian's been a rock star with me <laughs> on all of this. Brian will spend hours on the phone with me going go. through technical details of this. So. <laughs> You're too kind. Thank you. All right. Uh, it's just uh, let me know and uh, I'll take your direction. Yeah. I'll pass it back to you. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So, so when you come in the server, the, this is the thing that we're trying to move people to as fast as they can, because this is how we in, we're now going to really integrate people and capture value. So in the supply here channel, you'll see ticket tool, right? Create a ticket to apply and onboard. Creating a ticket begins your application and onboarding process. Onboarding team will respond to you if they don't, or you just need further help um, onboarding at scurf.io, right? We have a direct, um, uh, another a direct uh, communication channel with them. So Brian, if you wanna click start application. So yeah, so you'll see what it does. It creates a ticket that we're calling application that's directly between um, the user and then the onboarding team and um, internal folks to be able to view it. So Brian, if we can go into the ticket. Right, so when you have your um, direct channel with us, you'll see, welcome to SCURF. We are excited to onboard you into all the opportunities here. Please respond to the instructions below what bounty grant or full-time part-time work are you applying for? And then link your resume, CV, or portfolio. We're not storing any data. We wanna stay away from storing a lot of data. So we're only asking for links with, with this kind of stuff. Yep, see, what does Brian want to apply for? He wants to apply for a grant, awesome. <laughs> so. In here, we have a bunch of steps next about how this will work, right? So say someone's applying for um, a, a grant. Right away, we're gonna get some information from them, but Tuan has her own process about how she understands if someone does that grant. So we'll immediately be able to tag Tuan, call Tuan in and say, hey, let's let's start working to, to move this person along, right? And we can work directly with them here. Say someone was applying for um, part-time work That's where or full-time work, that's where we're going to call in Tanya. And so we'll call in Tanya and she'll work directly and start her process here as well. Um, and then we do have a different process for bounties, but I know we are working on getting some bounties up there. So um, say afterwards, right, we're, we've talked to a bunch of people, we've done interviews, we've done everything in this channel. Um, we're ready to close the ticket and start to hand someone off to their uh, vertical. So, Brian, if you want to click close. Awesome. So the final message you'll see when we start to close out this ticket and move someone into their vertical. Congratulations on completing onboarding with SCURF. Please contact your work lead for any questions about assignments and then use questions channel for further support on your onboarding or follow the info, ch info channel for information about hours and invoicing onboarding updates and meetings and opportunities to level up. So this is another great um, opportunity for us where we're able to give people the, the next steps on information. Um, another thing we're going to be doing with people and that we've started is a um, monthly onboarding session. So you'll already see this on the events calendar in SCURF. 
Um, and that's going to happen, I believe, on the 6th of every month. Uh, that is a Monday or whatever the first Monday of the month is. Um, and what we're going to do with people is hold, you know, 30 minutes to an hour meeting, depending on, on how many folks we have there. Um, and just uh, welcome to SCURF again, get them to introduce to other people. We'll probably call in leads depending on, um, you know, who's in there. If, you, if we have three people from your vertical, we'll call you in. If, you know, if we have leads from uh, people from different verticals, we'll call different leads in. Um, and this is where we'll just give them a rundown on, on all the information they need to know. So how to invoice with SCURF, you know, what is SCURF, how to navigate all of these things, you know, give them all the resources uh, they need if they, you know, haven't already gotten them. Um, and then again, just kind of welcome them in the, into the community and, and do some fun stuff and, yeah, you know, uh, get to know each other so they, they can put a face to uh, the username. So that's it. And then, Brian, if you click close. Yep. So what this does when it closes too, it's going to save to this channel called onboarding ticket transcripts. Brian, if you want to go to that. Yeah, let me just make a quick comment here. Okay, um, when people submit a application here, they won't see this step at the end. Actually, this is one of the management views and I see it because my user account is a manager. So I'm seeing the conclusion of my own ticket here from the perspective of a manager. Okay. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Yep, they won't they won't see that part. Yeah. So if we go to the transcripts, so all of this, what this tool does too is it it'll save all of these, all of the chat you have as transcripts. So um we don't have to open it, Brian, unless uh you want to, but we can download this transcript and then we can we can open it and it's an HTML file that shows us um everything that happened within that log. Um which hopefully is great um, you know, later when we want to know, well, how did that go? You know, why why might we have uh, not done something with them or what was that question about? We have a log of all of that. Um, eventually it will not be saved on Discord. Right now it saves into Discord, but we don't wanna use Discord as a uh, file management. So um, we'll eventually take these off and move them into a file. It's also nice that uh, you can uh, see who was tagged in the transcript. So if multiple people were called into a particular ticket, um, you can see who it was, which is kind of mm -hmm. nice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that is um, the gist of, of that tool. And I think this is, this is the biggest thing that I think is just going to help us streamline this whole process. So for everyone that's involved with SCURF, whenever someone wants to, you know, get more involved with SCURF, point them straight to the Discord. They should be going straight to the Discord. They should basically live in that with us. Um, and they should use this to, to onboard and, and apply into SCURF now. If you want to go back to my slides. Okay, Eugene, I'll pass it back to you then. And uh, was this one we left? No, this yeah. one. Yeah. Right? And so this one, yeah. So I just wanted to share with you again, kind of like where we're going from here. Or maybe, you know what? Let me take questions. Does anyone have questions? right now so far about how to use anything about how we'll be handling anything questions so far i feel like rich always has questions no <laughs> pretty straightforward yeah, chris says pretty straightforward set up the awkwardness before i dominate the q a session again I'm going to start calling on people's names directly, though, and asking them. <laughs> Valerie, you're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tamar. <laughs> I have lots and lots and lots of questions, but maybe I'll save them to the end because some of them are a bit philosophical and some of them are kind of like what's next and what does it actually look like in practice type questions. So maybe okay. I won't wreck the flow. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll go back. If you want to go back, Eugene, to that roadmap slide, then I'll start from there. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so um, so yes, so we've done a lot of work so far. Um, I'm hoping that all of that is We lost your audio, Valor. Oh. Okay. Can you hear me? I heard, yeah. Don't That's better. Oh, okay. Weird. Um okay. Yeah, so uh 
we've done a lot of work. I hope you heard that. Um, and and it's, a, it's a lot of work that um, the whole team has been doing. I think not just um, not just us. We, we've just had this little small part in it. Um, but what we want to keep doing, right, is we've kind of gotten to this point now where we have what we're calling V1. And so um, V1 is what, what, what we really just shared. And so as we go forward, we're going to test that. We're going to get some feedback on it. We're going to look for more ways um, to automate certain things about how you come into the server or, or how you um, start to engage with us or how you're asked to start to engage with us. Um, and then we have a lot of other things that we kind of want to build out, right? Like how-to videos um, for uh, full-time and part-time em um, employees to our, our contractors with us too. We want to have welcome kits um, just so that, you know, you're really coming in to, to work with us. Um, we want to roll out post-onboarding surveys. Um, we want to do all of this too at the end of the day as a, a, how do you train someone else on this too? So we're not locked into a, you know, a, a, um, a key person dependent that, that anyone can uh, start to pick this up and we can train people on this easily. And then we really want to touch all the adjacent processes to this too, or we want to start to look at what are the adjacent processes and how do we want to address those. Um, so again, we have hiring, um, but I, I don't think that that's where it, it stops. Um, and we'll be also rolling out templates. And then with um, the terms and titles that we recently solidified, you'll see them um, as role changes um, in the server as well, so that they they match what um, what we've done um, and what we've decided on. Um, and so this is sort of our timeline. We're um, working with internal communications um, all along the way to, to um, streamline that. That is something Tamar can speak to if she wants to add anything there. Um, and then we'll continue to kind of um, utilize this roadmap and, and build it up so you guys know what, what we're doing. If you want to go next slide. And then I think at, at the end of this, what I'm really just asking for is that, you know, please provide feedback. Please like start using it once it's um, live and um, chat with Tamar and I directly. I'm on Discord as um, Vincenzo Spaghetti and um, Tamar is uh, Liberty uh, Coppola. And so um, please chat with us directly um, or email us um, to I'm Valerie at scurf.io. Um, so test the ticket. Yeah. Tell us what you didn't like, um, what you did and what you didn't like. Um, if you're internal too, utilize the templates in the um, opportunities category and uh, post what you have there. Um, you know, I know that kind of opportunities are made within the vertical. So please utilize that template. I know that we're probably adding it to GitHub first, but, you know, copy that over and, and put it on um, Discord too. We, we want to hit people with the information they need a couple of times. And then um, check bounties for test was onboarding. So my goal too is that um, the work that we have here, we can also get um, to other people out there. And so, um, uh, and maybe I need approval on that, <laughs> but I'd like to do that too. And then I think that's all, all I got, Eugene, if you want to move to the, the last slide. Yeah. So uh, questions, philosophies. There's Stephanie, one you had a question. Yes, yeah, Stephanie wanna... has a question in the chat. Did you have access to a microphone, Stephanie? Did you want to read that out or should we read that for you? Yeah, I'm curious if, um, so this is interesting in terms of onboarding, but I'm curious about kind of the, the next steps of taking users from signing up from SCARF to becoming power users of SCARF or power contributors. And mm -hmm. if that's the responsibility of the individual um, vertical leads or if that's something this team will be taking on as well. Yeah, I think it's going to be both. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be both. That's something we're we're going to keep touching as well. So um, I think it's both. I think once you're really in a vertical and you're working with folks, um, I think that's the best point for leads and heads of teams to see value, see people are doing good things and help move them up. Like you're the one that's going to be working with them directly. Um, you know, things that they're doing and the, the, the good stuff that they're executing, like let's yeah, let's use you directly to, to to move people up. But I think that onboarding is always going to touch that too. So um, when we move people, you know, forward, I think that on yeah, onboarding is going to help um, kind of encourage that or or work with teams to say, hey, oh, how are you doing that, and how can we help support that? So I think that that's something we're going to look at um, continuing to. Um, 
Hopefully that answers your question, Stephanie. Are, can you see when people raise their hands? Or are you on a um, mobile device? I'm on both. I can see that you raised your hand, Rich. <laughs> okay. Well, I was just patiently waiting for somebody to ask me. <laughs> okay. Huh. I'll ask myself. There we go. Rich, you got a question? <laughs> I do have a question. So what I would like to talk about is something, uh, Stephanie, that you mentioned. Um, and what I like to do in these things generally, and I think Valerie is kind of anticipating that, is like doing some context and stuff. So. Here's the way that I kind of boil these things down is that uh, SCURF has a really cool mission. We have lots and lots of work to do, but not enough people. Um, and we also have a pool of resources of uh, individuals that are in our chats and our forums and our socials and at our events and all the rest. So how do we combine those two uh, universes together to uh, do synergy and stuff and do lots of cool work? And so how do we take a really talented resource pool and uh, communicate the fact that we have really cool uh, projects, um, lots of grants, lots of opportunities available, um, and then go from that kind of discovery phase to um, explaining what the work is all about, how to get involved, who to talk to about it, how to be, uh, contribute to the culture and pick up tasks and then get compensated for it. Um, the first step is hard-ish, I guess, like combining or connecting the resource pool with the uh, opportunities is tricky. Um, the ramping up afterwards is, uh, there's a lot. Um, how do we get the mental model of what Scripps up to, all the different projects we have on the go, um, connected with the right person to help them get the work started, all the rest of those things. And that's kind of like that phase two that maybe you're um, asking questions about, Stephanie, is um, how do we continue that relationship? So saying like, hey, we have opportunities, here's the form, talk to this chat bot, okay, we're done, good luck. That's that's never gonna work. So we have, there's it's the beginning of a relationship. So there's a lot of things that happen afterwards. And that's where the culture building occurs and the um, community leadership really begins to shine. And that's the thing that we're going into in phase two. Like how do we have people on the ground in the chat directly engaged, fostering the relationship, helping people find uh, their seat at the table at SCURF afterwards. And that's something we're going to continue to explore. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about too is that um, as we are working on the onboarding process, it's becoming more and more apparent that we have uh, kind of like five baskets of opportunities, I think. One of the great things about SCURF is that it's not, like in the crypto space, traditionally it's a technical uh, environment so you know you can learn solidity or you can do community management and there you go that's the, that's your opportunities um at scurf uh we have a wide range of things to do we need project managers we need content creators we need writers we need illustrators we need uh events planners we need researchers we need, so there's a huge gamut of activities that we have here and they fall into those five buckets i was talking about so we have uh, the content team that are producing the materials that we are releasing back into the comments. We have the engagement team, which is working on how do we create that culture and, and interaction with our stuff. Uh, the outreach team that Eugene is kicking ass on is how do we create relationships with the universities and industry and faculties and luminaries in the space and get them engaged uh, to feed into content and engagement. And the discovery team. So how do we make sure that everybody in the world uh, is everybody? Everybody in our addressable market is aware of the things that we have going on. So how do we market and talk about and increase the discoverability of all of our assets? So those those are four. The fifth one though is um, SCURF itself and the community itself. So how do we support our community members, uh, mentor them up, get them trained, find them uh, cool roles that they can get engaged with, and how do we uh, perform activities that support SCURF itself. And so we have that fifth kind of like scurf cultural bucket. And in my mind, that's probably the first stop for a lot of people as they're getting engaged with SCURF. So they come into the chat, hang out, figure out what we're all about, get energized by the mission, help us uh, do the mission. And as you become more specialized or you know sooner or later, depends on people's aptitudes, Okay, this is great. Scurf has a good mission. All of this is super fun, and I'm doing work that makes me feel good about life. <laughs> Maybe I'm overstating. I'm overselling. Uh, but here's a lot of good activities. But also, 
I have a deep and abiding passion for research. And so I should probably jump into the content category or and talk to those people there. And so the onboarding team is kind of responsible for doing that as well. So like, let's get you into SCURF. And then as we figure out where uh, your skills lie, let's, okay, you know what? This is, you're great at the social stuff. So let's get you talking to uh, Maria and her discovery team and help out there. Or, oh, wow, you have, uh, you're great with people and you really understand what we're going on we have going on here you're super organized then let's uh you should talk to eugene and let's get you talk let's get you thinking about what outreach looks like and so that's that's kind of like the path here and if we maybe can somebody share the screen and go back to that roadmap thing because that was uh there was so much juicy information in there but um that's that's what i like to ensure that we have an onboarding team that is communicating to people is that there's an arc here and there's a long uh there's a journey i suppose where it starts off with like oh what's this chat all about and it ends up with okay uh i'm now a lead of a team that's making a difference in the space and i'm doing presentations in our community call just like valerie so everybody can be just like valerie <laughs> if they put their mind to it so this is the kind of arc that we have going on here so this is me rambling a bit but i don't know whether that answered some of your questions stephanie or whether that just raised some more for you I see Brian's hand, unless Stephanie wants to respond. We're on the spot, All right? <laughs> okay, I just wanted to comment on things that are uh, forthcoming and steps to follow up in the onboarding process. We're setting up GitHub to field a lot of this as well, and there's going to be a lot of automation built into this that will ripple out into a lot of the project planning behind our onboarding. So I'm excited to present that in the future, and I'm excited to be talking with everybody about how all that's going to come together. Well, uh, I saw, did have another question, or was that what you were to say, Eugene? I was going to say, yeah, Stephanie had a question on how are you capturing survey data and process development to also create published research on this meta side of things? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, that's totally in our wanting to do things. <laughs> so um, I think that what I'm doing at least right now is we have a lot of working documents that we've been doing and uh, working data sheets and kind of all of the, yeah, all of the stuff that you don't see as final product that I'm hoping to organize in some meta fashion about, yes, how to do that work so that you could, other people could take this and, and understand that as a process for them to, to do in, in a redesign. Is that what you mean, Stephanie? That's, that's absolutely what I would like to do though. So, so we have that at a, at a level that is open to the, the Web3 world. No, so I meant more of almost an academic publication or mm course, academic publication on the development of the SCURF community. Um, uh -huh. It goes into, so I sit on the um, board of directors for the science, team science. Um, and I think that community would be interested in finding out more mm -hmm. about how SCURF like became a community and the steps that you're taking there, mm -hmm. benchmarking that kind of against best practices. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Yeah, What's I'm the happy community? to, oh, please, sir. What's the name again, Stephanie? Science for what? And then you can go, Eugene. What's the board? Feel free to drop in chat if it's easier for you. Yeah, go science ahead, Eugene. And team science. That's a fun. The science of team science. That's fun. It's always good to have the science of science of things in, in title. Um, but yeah, no, that's cool. And that's something I, I'm happy to answer from a slightly different angle and perspective, just because I think on the peer review project, we are slightly more advanced with that kind of thinking. But the goal is to then realize how we can do that in other areas. And interestingly enough, and I don't know if this is just the universe trying to tell us something, uh, but uh, in a very short span of time recently, I had uh, three separate UX designers reach out and be like, hey, so Scurf and UX, what's up? What's going on? How can we help you do stuff better? Um, and I think from the, the, the meta side of things, right, I, I'd be interested in learning more about what uh, the, the science of team science thing, or excuse me, the science of team science group 
what particular angles they might be interested in. Uh, because for us, just as the group that's very actively building, uh, it, it can, you know, I don't mean to make excuses, but the reality is that, you know, you're just heads down at the problem at hand. There's so many fires that come up. Uh, it can sometimes be tough to give yourself the room to zoom out and do that meta level thinking when uh, in, in the midst of it. So I do want to get us being more intentional in the different areas where we can have that kind of meta analyses and to, to partner with the right groups externally who can take in some data and help us understand in the short term, here's the data they would need to actually do any kind of analysis. So on the peer review project, what we're doing uh, is, you know, we have our open peer review project that uh, we're, we're getting things kicked off on. Uh, we're gonna have that initial go around where we have three projects that get their outputs reviewed. Uh, and immediately we're talking to meta researchers around peer review to start thinking, hey, if we're establishing this as a baseline, but we wanna do many more, excuse me, rounds of experimentation beyond this, how do we actually set this up to be useful for proper research on the topic? Right, because if we all of a sudden, we don't have a control, we don't have a baseline, we start experimenting with 30 different variables at the same time, that's not useful data, right? But then if we can actually structure that in a way, and as those running the project, if we can be aware of what needs to be in place to have the useful data outputs for meta researchers to be able to do their work more, um, that's a really interesting question. And I know one of the one of the elements that came up in the, you know, should we add a DSI forum, a DSI section to our forum, uh, someone presented the idea of, no, we should add a meta science section to our forum because that captures the part of DSI that we're most interested in. Uh, and I know some of the pushback was, you know, we don't have a DeFi section. Why would we have a DSI section if there are relevant other, you know, if, if someone is dealing with a governance issue, what difference does it make what domain within the world of Web3 they're looking in? That should be governance. That shouldn't be DeFi or DSI or a different thing. Um, and so what is that right split to actually capture the information that is not currently being captured? And I actually really like the meta science approach. And I think as an organization here at SCURP, we need to better understand how we can be partnering with, collaborating with, and extending the community and activities that we're doing to also support relevant meta science uh, aspects. Uh, so yeah, Stephanie would definitely be happy to catch up more about how, oh, and there's Eric who proposed the idea of raising his hand, <laughs> so I'll pass it off to you in a moment. Uh, but yeah, Stephanie, um, if you would be open to having a chat with uh, with Valerie and Paul and some other folks and myself uh, who are thinking about both the, the community side, the onboarding side, the engagement side, uh, and the meta research side, I think we can start coming up with, well, what do we need to be doing? And I'm assuming, you know, probably not a bad idea to talk to some folks in these communities of, uh, you know, the science and team science and the CSCCE one that you added links to. And thank you for sharing those. Uh, I would love to get a sense of, what do they want to learn? What data is needed for that? And how do we bake capturing that information into our actual experimentation and, and planning? Um, and I can get you all connected as well, if anything. Um, but yeah, that was my little spiel there. So Eric, did you want to jump in with something there? Yeah, so thanks, Eugene. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Eric. I come from the, the DSI community working with uh, DSI Labs and the DSI Foundation. I do a lot of this community management and onboarding work. And whenever I first saw that process flow, I just nerded out like nobody's business. So kudos to y'all. One, uh, one of the points that's been brought up in the DSI community on a semi-regular basis is the concept of onboarding as a public good. Um, mm. About the process of a scientist going through Web3 or coming into Web3. And I think SCURF is a fantastic starting point, especially given the professional atmosphere of the forum. Um, thinking about a lot of the other groups that are also going to be needing this kind of onboarding flow might be interesting if SCURF could make a way to have some of this information and some of this thought around onboarding be in the public domain. And potentially, I know with the, from the standpoint of some of this meta-level research, uh, capture some of the marketing aspects of DSI. So if you could make this a public good with maybe anonymized data coming from a variety of different scientific and meta-science specific projects, might be a great way to get better insight into what the community is doing as a whole, then in addition, give scientists a much better path into onboarding into Web3, as opposed to just one singular project. 
So just wanted to throw that one out there as a potential thought. Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic work, by the way. Huge fan of timelines and process flows. Y'all did good. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. I'm so happy that Eric just chimes in. <laughs> <laughs> to hear your voice, yeah, and that you're on this call. It's, it's been too long since Denver. <laughs> we'll have to catch back up in Boston. Absolutely. Oh, actually, I'm going to Austin at some point, so I need to reach out to you about that. We'll talk. Yep. <laughs> Sounds great. I want to follow on and sort of reinforce what you just said, Eric. So that's that's one of the models that we have in play. Um, we haven't really like doubled down on it, but that's uh, we we have a our GitHub and we're we're collecting content in there. But mm -hmm. when we make a process and when we come up with a framework or we have some internal mechanisms that we think could provide utility, um, we post it publicly as well. We don't package it as well as we could and as well as we want to in the future. But the idea of, um, actually, oh, I just I just thought of something cool. I just got triggered. So this, this is one of the things that Scurf kind of positions itself as, as a facilitator in the space. And beyond just facilitating actual initiatives, um, it's the way to facilitate is a thing that we can contribute as well. And so as part of that facilitation model, opening up our frameworks and our granting programs and our onboarding processes and our events strategies and things like that, just as a package. Uh, it's our hope right now that people um, sort of uh, creep through our GitHub, find the things in the way that we did things in the past and then use that as a model or at least a starting point. Um, once we uh, get a bit more refined and have additional resources that potentially come through the onboarding process itself, uh, we'll be able to allocate some additional um, thought to uh, moving process into the commons as well, which I think there's a, there's a huge value there. So I agree with you completely. Awesome. Thank you. I definitely, everyone definitely appreciates you open sourcing all this. And it'll be interesting to think, especially as we uh, go further down this roadmap and beyond, you know, what are what are the ways that we can? And I know Valerie already commented in the in the chat that it will be packaged and published on GitHub. But yeah, what are the ways that we can kind of uh, help not just use this as an internal tool? Because obviously the beginning point is we need to sort our onboarding stuff and then we want to open what we've done. Um, but in general, how can these kind of efforts and projects, whether it's on this or open peer review, how can they simultaneously both serve uh, our community as well as uh, wider communities in the Web3 space that can benefit from it? Uh, and I know, yeah, that the idea of uh, sort of onboarding both within a single community, so onboarding in a place like Scurf, or onboarding even in wider communities. So what does you know governance onboarding or DSI level onboarding look like and mean? Uh, and that's not a problem for us at this point uh, or for us alone at any point, uh, but there are also just some interesting things to think about in the context of, uh, of onboarding in general. But yeah, does anyone else have any questions, thoughts, things you'd like to hear more color on? Anyone else just want to jump in and remind Valerie and Tamar all the awesome work they've been doing on the onboarding side, which <laughs> has been wonderful and we tremendously appreciate it. I can add something. Oh, go ahead. Please, Cassie. Um, I am completely new here, but super cool to see the work that you guys are doing. Like I would just echo that the onboarding process itself is a valuable tool. Um, I. I just have like a curiosity question of maybe like the, the type of person that you have in mind going through this process or like who are you thinking about when you put this process together? Yeah, totally. We're thinking about, um, we're thinking about a decently wide range, but mostly academics, researchers, you might have professors, I think people in general that are coming from academia. And so that's why We've tried to make it um, as uh, close to what they might be used to while also using a brand new tool of Discord, which they may or may not be used to. Um, and But I think that we're also probably touching people that are generally coming from Web3 and are, are you know, found SCURF um, at, uh, online or um, at a conference. Um, uh, 
uh, that are DSI folks, again, they might be Web3 natives or, or, or they might not. Um, and so I think that, yeah, we're bringing in both Web3 natives and non folks and hopefully bringing, I think Web3 natives are might um, go through this on their own really easily. Like they probably don't need as much there. They might be used to sort of like gamified experience of uh, Discord. Um, but I think we're really trying to get the folks that are not used to that at all and need something that might look a little bit similar to what they're used to in, you know, uh, the typical professional world. Yeah. Does that answer your question? And then Rich yeah. might have something to add to. Yeah. Um, I'm also curious. Yeah, just, well, I oh, guess sorry, maybe maybe you can also answer this, Rich, um, to give context. But um, the reason for choosing Discord, if it was to align with like the Web three space more, and then sort of onboarding researchers who might not be in Web three into that concept, mm -hmm. it could be yeah, like keeping like the, their toes. <laughs> it's definitely one of the challenges we have, and so a lot of our initiatives are based on creating. Uh, uh, a sandbox for academia to dip its toes into. That's a sort of a bridge between the absolute chaos of like what three on one end of the spectrum <laughs> and the sort of button down rigidity of academia on the other. And so how do we um, introduce uh, academics and independent researchers and uh, thinkers in more traditional environments to the models and the cultural assumptions and, and frameworks in Web3 without, um, uh, in a way that allows them to understand, or actually, what analogy am I looking for? I don't know. Uh, but sort of dipping their toes in the pool without um, being overwhelmed. Um, and frankly, Discord is just the de facto communication mechanism when it comes to DAO creation or communication, at least when you're dealing with uh, real time comms. So, uh, a lot of our onboarding processes um, do have a vague, uh, probably more structure than you probably find in a lot of Web3 organizations. But part of that, that model is to allow people that are coming from academia to understand what's, or at least have a chance at understanding what's going on around them. So one of our, which is something I wanted to talk, touch on briefly with your previous comment is, that's one of the major demographics that at least I'm personally interested in is, not only the Web3 crowd, um, that's kind of low hanging fruit for us. Uh, independent researchers in the space, people are familiar with crypto that are in it deep enough to realize that, at least from the industry perspective, that research and academia is missing from this puzzle. And then they can come find us. This is gonna be a comfortable landing. There's nothing to be surprising to find at Scurf. Um, there's a term, uh, at least for me personally, a shockingly large number of people in academia that have um, serious uh, questions and uh, at least uh, legitimate or uh, curiosity about what's going on in Web3. And there's no bridge between those two worlds right now. Um, or at least, well, I'm sure there are, I shouldn't say that there are bridges, but there's not um, a uh, sort of a structured or a supportive bridge between those two worlds. And that's one of the things that I think that our onboarding process can help with. How do we get faculty and professors and postdocs um, into our ecosystem in a way that can be understood and does not offer um, alarming uh, activities or immediate reputational disadvantages. So like people, from academia coming into a, a discord and then finding a bunch of hype beasts talking about token prices and stuff is um that can be extremely off-putting one of the things that we're dealing with or we found early on when we're sort of crafting out the models behind outreach at scurf is that uh frequently when you're dealing with academia we're we're trading on salted earth there's years gone by um Lots of large projects, lots of uh, vaguely unstable or potentially shady uh, initiatives have gone into academia, um, promising this or promising that. And so what we're trying to do is uh, reestablish some legitimacy and some diligence there and some professionalism. Uh, and that's that's hopefully all baked into the onboarding process. I'm not sure I've answered questions effectively. So Cassidy, did that answer your questions or did I just start speechifying? No, yeah, definitely. Thank you for the context. I think it it totally makes sense. Um, 
I'm happy about the initiative overall. And I did see that Stephanie also had another follow on question in the chat, which I think uh, we should have enough time to get to. So also curious about the personas and what their user journeys look like. So I know generally I will. Oh yeah, uh, generally I know that's something that we uh, want to look at in more nuance overall, not just in the context of onboarding, but broadly for SCURF. I think we started with a super, uh, super, super wide mission of make research better, connect industry and academia. And, you know, like these are very huge things. But as we actually concretize what we're doing and for whom, uh, and that's partially why I want to uh, do this reading group on impact networks by David Ehrlichman within the community, because at least for me, that really 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 help crystallize like where we go and how and why uh and so uh i want to go through that level thinking with the community and if that makes sense then to everyone then we can really start digging into more of what are the personas by networks of impact that we want to create and have uh but yeah valerie i saw you went off mute and then we'll, we'll pass it off to chris with any remaining time no that that's fine i uh, chris hasn't spoken yet so um let chris speak i can follow up with stephanie too yeah, on that note, it's like um, it feels like we're only going one way towards industry. And is there any movement towards academia at any point? Because it's like if we're trying to onboard academia into industry, that's one thing. But are we trying to onboard industry into academia practices like as part of SCURF's mission? Because it feels one way I don't, so don't far. We're going to run out of time super fast and there's a speech here inside of me so i'll try to tamp it down but we're not trying to like pull people out of academia and interest, industry and industry people out of into academia we're trying to open up the lines of communication so ultimately the goal here is that uh web3 is rapidly innovating and occasionally uh making well that they're uh they're deploying fast and breaking things uh frequently that we're that's a great model to do things uh, sometimes, but other times it's not necessary. Uh, it, academia has a long, long history and of uh, thinking about the issues that we're beginning to get proof of concepts or real world implementations for in, in many areas for the first time. So we have tooling now that allows a lot of the thought experiment experiments or the theoretical models that academia has been coming up with for hundreds and hundreds of years to be put into practice. And so ethnographers and anthropologists and political scientists have been thinking about things. Uh, crypto is actually building these things. Um, and the, the concern is that these two groups aren't communicating with each other as much as they possibly could in order to get the research and the data or the data and the case studies out of industry into academia and the lessons and theories out of academia into industry. So. That's the bridge building we're making is informational bridge bridges, not necessarily career bridges. And I think that perfectly brings us to time. So thank you, Valerie, for taking the time to present today. Uh, thank you to everyone uh, and new folks who joined for the first time, folks who participated. Uh, and yeah, thank you all for spending part of your Thursday with us wherever you are in the world. Please feel free to reach out to myself, Valerie, or anyone else uh, uh, with any conversational points that came up. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for joining, everybody. Thank you. If you Thanks, before you jump out, if anyone has any extra questions or they want to continue the conversation, come join us in chat. That's what it's for. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, Valerie. Bye. Bye.